All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to configure VTP pruning on Cisco Switch. And this video is just one of many in the GNS3 labs for the CCNA certification series. So if that interests you, you should subscribe and check out the rest of the videos in that playlist as well. And before we dive into the configuration, we're gonna talk a little bit about what VTP pruning is, how VTP pruning works, whether or not it's enabled by default, and why you would wanna use VTP pruning. And then we're gonna get into the VTP pruning configuration demonstration on GNS3. So first off, what is VTP pruning? It prevents traffic from traversing trunk ports that go to switches that do not have an active port in that particular VLAN. It is disabled by default, and by default, VLAN 1 cannot be pruned. It can be enabled globally on switches, or it can be enabled on a per link basis for specific VLANs. And we're gonna demonstrate that when we get to that part. So how does VTP pruning work? VTP pruning means that broadcasts and other traffic are only sent across trunk links that actually need the information. For example, if switch 1 does not have an active port in VLAN 10, then switch 1 won't receive traffic for VLAN 10. And the reason that you would want to use VTP pruning is because it reduces unnecessary flooded traffic, whether it be broadcast, multicast, unknown, or flooded unicast packets. It's going to make it so that the traffic only goes where it's supposed to go. And this really sticks with the design principle of only wanting to forward traffic where it absolutely needs to be. All right, so now I have GNS3 pulled up and we're using the same daisy chain topology that we used in the other VTP labs. And basically we have just trunks established between all of these switches. And we've been using server one primarily as the primary switch to disseminate the VLAN database to all of the other switches which are in the same VTP domain. So at this point, all of the switches except for switch three have the same VLANs. Just real quick, I'll show you with show VLAN brief. So switches one, two, four, and five are gonna have these three VLANs, which would be 10, 20, and 30. And then switch three, which is operating in transparent mode, which means that the VLANs are defined locally has an extra VLAN that only exists on that switch, which is VLAN 40, which is called test. All right, so now we are going to configure VTP pruning and there's really not that much to it. It can be configured globally on a switch with the command VTP prune. All right, so here you can see I had it already switched on on that switch. Uh, but what that command is gonna do is it's gonna turn it on for all ports that are configured as trunk ports and it's going to be on for all VLANs. All right, and then when it comes to switch three, we're going to use the interface configuration to do the VLAN pruning for the specific VLANs. Go into configuration mode, and then I will copy and paste this in, which is going to configure VLAN pruning for both uh, zero, zero and switch one. That is the range command for both those interfaces at once. All right, and then we pull up the running config for uh, gig00 interface, and you can see that that switch port uh, pruning the VLAN command is there. And again, what that command does is it turns on VLAN pruning for those specific interfaces, which is gonna be 00 trunking to two and 01 trunking to four. And then we'll just turn it on globally for switches four and five. All right, and so the end effect of our configuration is that essentially all VLANs are pruned across all of these trunk lengths, uh, which explicitly means that if, for example, switch one does not have any active ports for VLAN 10, then it will not receive VLAN 10 traffic from switch two. And likewise, if switch five does not have any active ports in VLANs 20 or 30, then it would not receive traffic for those VLANs from switch four. And so that's pretty much all there is to it. It's a very basic configuration. And again, you can do it both globally or on specific links for specific VLANs if you want, if you need to be that granular. And so that's gonna conclude this video. If you found it helpful, please consider liking and subscribing and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.